Hi guys. It is a hot, sticky midsummer day now that we are beyond Labor Day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Trying to find the humor in this on Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. And oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co pilot, Sancho Panza. What we're doing is procrastinating the switch in my septic tank pump. The electric switch in my septic tank pump seems to be malfunctioning. This is your old uh, Doomer Prepper. My septic tank is 100% dependent on the grid here in the collapse. My well is if I lose the grid, if the power goes down, I lose my water, and for all intents and purposes, I even lose my toilet, to give you some idea how well I am preparing. But now it is this sweltering hot day, and I'm supposed to go out there and dig up a septic pipe switch, and I would much prefer to sit here in this nice, cool little house and... Uh, bring you today's Chronicle of the Collapse, which we're going to look at a couple of stories. So I guess the, our, our Save the Planet heroes at the United Nations have come up with their latest uh, report about how literally, I guess, how doomed we are. Uh, this is the French news service. Here's actually several versions of uh, this story on the mainstream media looking at the latest report. Uh, the French news service went with the water warnings. Water warning as climate risks intensify. Yes, record temperatures are accelerating the rise of sea levels, melting glaciers and snow coverage and threatening the water supply for billions According to a major UN report, I guess this morning, Wednesday, charting the quote, increasing and irreversible impacts of climate change, uh, the multi agency United in Science report said the world had seen its warmest five years on record in the last. Five years, yes, adding that extreme weather events bore a clear fingerprint of climate change. <clears throat> it comes after UN Chief Antonio Guterres said that nations must use the corona panic crisis as a springboard to implement transformational green policies, transformational green poli policies, yes, to make energy, transport, industry, and everyday life more sustainable, such as uh, being able to flush your toilet without depending on the grid. I probably have the most unsustainable life I have ever had uh, living here at Bugs in a Jar Farm is the single most unsustainable place I have ever lived in my entire life. Yes, so uh, if they fail, if they, meaning if we fail to make these transformational green energy changes, if we fail, Guterres warned humanity was, quote, doomed. And so, guys, as we all, I'm going to get to this second article in a minute, but we are going to fail for the simple reason that the, this, this whole, these transformational green energy, new green new deal crap, 
uh, is a joke. Uh, everything about them is as unsustainable as fossil fuels. Uh, and so since it's not if they or we fail, it's when they or we fail that humanity is doomed. We are doomed because there is no hope of this transformational Green New Deal because the Green New Deal is a joke. It is a sick, twisted pipe dream. Again, more about that in a minute. Let's look at a little bit more of this story uh, before moving on to Planet of the Humans Redux here. The report, coordinated by the World Meteorological Organization, said humanity is not on track to meet the targets for emissions reductions that would avert devastating global warming. It highlighted, quote, the increasing and irreversible impacts of climate change which affects glaciers, oceans, nature's economies, and human living conditions and is often felt through water-related hazards like drought or flooding. What I'm experiencing right now is a drought in my flood control channel. Uh, this behind uh, <clears throat> my house here on Bugs in a Jar Farm, they dug out this flood control channel to save my house from flooding and now it is experiencing a drought and my new $5,000 pond has disappeared. <sighs> yes, and then of course, it, it, you know, it just goes through the usual laundry list about uh, all of the reasons they're mainly looking at sea level rise and glacier melt why humanity is doomed. Uh, let's get down uh, to the last quote. We have one more quote from uh, Mr. Gutierrez. Quote, the expectations that we have in relation to the next five years about storms, about drought, and about other dramatic impacts in the living conditions of many people around the world are absolutely terrible. The expectations are absolutely terrible. Thank you, uh, Brother Anthony. So I'm going to kind of let you draw your own dots between that and this book-length article by this fellow named Max Blumenthal. I've heard Max's name before. I'm not sure who he is. Uh, so uh, Max has done his homework. I'm going to put the link onto this article that's about this long. Uh, and what he's looking at is uh, why that documentary, Planet of the Humans, stirred up such a hornet's nest of controversy. Uh, uh, well, obviously it did because Planet of the Humans uh, is well or better than any other semi-mainstream documentary did the best job ever of uh, painting the greenwashing fallacy of the, the, green, the Green New Deal and renewable energy and all of this crap. And uh, good Lord, guys, uh, this article, as I say, would take me probably an hour and a half to read so we're just gonna we're gonna read 
the opening salvo, and then I'm going to close with a story about good old Donald Trump for the other end of the story about why we're so doomed. Take it away, Max. This is from the Gray Zone. Green billionaires. <laughs> Love that term. Green billionaires behind professional activist network that led suppression of Planet of the Humans documentary. <clears throat> the Michael Moore produced Planet of the Humans faced a coordinated suppression campaign led by professional climate activists, you know, such as Bill McKibben, uh, backed by the same green billionaires, Wall Street investors, industry insiders, and family foundations skewered in the film. Yes, uh, starting off with a quote from director Jeff Gibbs, uh, director of Planet of the Humans. Michael Moore did not direct this film. He did produce it to his credit. It is Jeff Gibbs is the man behind, you know, who was instrumental in this film. Starting off with a quote from the interview with Jeff here, quote, we must take control of our environmental movement and our future from billionaires and their permanent war on planet Earth. They, meaning green billionaires, are not our friends. Um, okay, I'm gonna, again guys, I'm gonna skip uh, the first paragraphs here. It's just leading in, talking about what it's, you know, going to look into is why was Planet of the Humans so viciously attacked when it came out? All right. Uh, what had this documentary done to inflame so much opposition from the faces and voices of professional climate justice activism. First, it probed, I love that word, it probed, I would say uh, it exposed and spelled out the well-established shortcomings of renewable energy sources like solar and wind power that have been marketed as a green panacea Planet of the Humans portray these technologies as anything but green, surveying the environmental damage already caused by solar and wind farms, which require heavy mining and smelting to produce, destroy swaths of pristine land, and sometimes demand natural gas to operate. While major environmental outfits lobbied for a Green New Deal to fuel a renewable-based industrial revolution and are now banking on a Democratic presidency to enact their proposals, Planet of the Humans put forward a radical critique that called their entire agenda into question, and uh, that's exactly what it was, is this conspiracy lace term agenda. Uh, if you're looking for the real Agenda 21, you don't need to go over to the right-wing uh, fake news channels. You need to go over to the left-wing fake news channels. Any news organization uh, claiming that the Green New Deal and, uh, and all of this, this greenwashing BS is going to do anything to save this planet from fossil fuels is fake news. 
it is the big green lie. I think Derek Jensen and Lear Keith, Bright Green Lies is the title of their upcoming book, which just picks up from Planet of the Humans and dives even further into the bright green lie of this left-wing agenda, you know, backed uh, by these hypocrites like Bill McKibben and Michael Mann and, and all the rest of, uh, you know, the rest of the gang. Uh, it, Agenda 21 is the left-wing conspiracy theory. Okay. <clears throat> As the director of the documentary, Jeff Gibbs explained, quote, when we focus on climate change only as the thing, the thing destroying the planet, and we demand solutions, we get used, we get used by forces of capital who want to continue to sell us the disastrous illusion that we can mine and smelt and industrialize our way out of this extinction event. And again, much, again, behind the scenes, much of what we are doing to save the planet is to burn the bio of the planet as green energy, close quote. Thank you, Jeff, for summing it up. Uh, getting Moving on with the article, Planet of the Humans crossed another bright green line by taking aim at the self-proclaimed climate justice activists themselves, painting them as opportunists who had been willingly co-opted by predatory capitalists. Yes. Um, the filmmakers highlighted the role of family foundations like the Rockefeller Brothers Fund in cultivating a class of professional activists that tend toward greenwashing partnerships with Wall Street and the Democratic Party to coalitions with anti-capitalist militants and anti-war groups, please. And of course, the number one villain here is Bill McKibben, uh, the guru of climate justice activism. Uh, which you better believe, Planet of the Humans, uh, is having fun with. Uh, perhaps the most provocative critique contained in Planet of the Humans was the portrait of full-time climate warriors like McKibben as de facto lobbyists for green tech billionaires and Wall Street investors determined to get their hands on the whopping 50 trillion, 50 trillion dollar profit opportunity that a full transition to renewable technology represents. Why have figures like Google CEO Eric Schmidt Michael Bloomberg, Virgin's Richard Branson, and Tesla founder Elon Musk been plowing their fortunes into climate advocacy? Why do you think? Follow the money. Keep it simple, stupid. The documentary taunted those who accepted these oligarchs' gestures of environmental concern at face value. Uh, there you go. And then, uh, good Lord, from there, Max Blumenthal uh, has done his homework. Uh,
I'm just reading. These are just the the individual chapter titles. The, this this uh, book length uh, essay broken down into chapters. So after that introduction, here is censorship, plain and simple. Yes, they break all of that down. Here is the next chapter. Mining a green future and burying the cost. Yes, mining the green future. We have all sorts of, here is an excellent graph of the minerals used in selected power generation technologies. You can see how green these are. Uh, this is, uh, I like this one, Mining's Unlikely Heroines, Greta Thunberg and AOC, talking about how Greta and AOC have been swept into this uh, web of lies. Uh, And they look at all the minerals used in different transport technologies. Uh, okay, then we break down the 2050 transition goal. Real science, real science or a murky crystal ball. We look at the murky crystal ball. Then uh, we move into the shell game of fossil fuel divestment. Yes, just moving it from one planet-eating activity to the next. Uh, good Lord. And then uh, we <clears throat> break into the Rockefellers. The Rockefeller Brothers Fund incubates 350 Dot org. Yes, it is the Rockefellers, uh, according to Max, who uh, planted the seed money. Uh, they have all kinds of fun with this. Here is the Rockefeller Brothers Go Green and Invest in Halliburton. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Here is blood and gore. Uh, you got to love that. Uh, of course, they're talking about Al Gore. Can't remember Lawyer Blood's first name. Blood and gore make the case for long-term greed. Yes. Uh, good Lord. And they break down all of the uh, the people uh, behind the scenes. And then we look at the, you know, they talk about all of these big banksters, these planet-eating banksters behind it all. I see my own planet-eating bank, Bank of America, right up at the top of here, you know, talking about, of course, how these giant planet-eating banksters behind it all are using uh, the, these BS uh, green organizations. They go over and look at the Danish connection. All right. From big green critic to planet of the humans Opponent. Then we uh, we look at Naomi Klein. Why would Naomi Klein uh, be so virulent in her trash talking of Planet of the Humans? Why do you think? Didn't Naomi Klein? Didn't she just write a book uh, about the Green New Deal? Uh, Naomi Klein is perhaps the single biggest little lefty sellout to the global corporatocracy is any in the bunch, completely leaving Greta and AOC in the dust. Anybody who thinks Naomi Klein 
uh, any of you little lefties listening to this thinking that Naomi Klein is a friend of this planet. Uh, let Max Blumenthal disavow you of that notion. And of course, good, is that Hillary Clinton? Don't even want to go there. All right, then of course, we have to, towards the bottom, uh, get uh, to the chapter, Seeing Green, Seeing Green in Joe Biden. Uh, you know, talking about this absolute joke uh, environmental platform of Joe Biden. Uh, how Joe Biden has completely uh, bought into this crap. Uh, this is why I am not voting for Joe Biden and for other reasons <clears throat> which we will not talk about here. Uh, so let's read the final paragraph about why Joe Biden, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for the death of this planet. And then we're going to close with uh, a nod to why a vote for Donald Trump uh, is a vote for the death of this planet. Okay, the last paragraph. Now, with the Biden campaign promising a new flood of renewable subsidies and tax breaks under the auspices of a clean energy plan, the public remains in the dark about what it is signing up for. Even the ambitious agenda, even if the ambitious agenda fails to deliver any substantial environmental good, it promises a growing class of green investors another opportunity to do well. It is always the billionaires who are going to make money. So who is Max Blumenthal, uh, the editor-in-chief of The Gray Zone? Max is an award-winning journalist and the author of several books. Um, he has produced articles for an array of publications publications, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Blumenthal founded the Gray Zone in 2015 to shine a journalistic light on America's state of perpetual war and its dangerous domestic reproductions. But we're going to move from uh, at least Donald Trump was, was barely mentioned in Max's book length analysis because uh, this is all you really need to say. So I was listening to NPR yesterday, uh, it, you know, getting a laugh out of Donald Trump uh, extending the moratorium on uh, offshore oil drilling in Florida and Georgia and South Carolina. Good for Donald Trump saving the planet. This was just good old Yahoo News, uh, David Knowles, editor. This was his spin on uh, that hilarious knee slapper yesterday. Trump, cheerleader in chief for drilling and fracking, proclaims himself, quote, the great environmentalist. President Trump traveled to Florida on Tuesday and pitched himself as a strong defender of the environment, despite his unprecedented moves to overturn regulations put in place to safeguard our country's air, water, and natural resources. Quote, Trump is the great environmentalist, the president said of himself, and I am, I am. I strongly believe in it, in it. I guess he means the environment. Of course, left unsaid at the ceremony, uh, you know, for extending a ban on offshore oil drilling, 
uh, is that it was Trump's own proposal to allow drilling along the very coast, uh, those very coasts of those states that sparked the backlash that led him to reconsider his plan. In his remarks, Trump called himself, quote, the number one environmental president since Teddy Roosevelt, close quote. Yes. Uh, of course, it was Trump's administration that lopped off two million acres from two cherished wilderness areas in Utah, the largest rollback of federal land protection in our nation's history. Uh, and of course, the Trump administration has sought to weaken or, or roll back roughly 100 environmental regulations since he became president. In February, nine of the nation's leading environmental groups issued a joint statement calling Trump the worst president for our environment in our history. Quote, Donald Trump's administration has unleashed an unprecedented assault on our environment and the health of our communities. His policies threaten our climate, air, water, public lands, wildlife, and oceans. No amount of greenwashing can change the simple fact Donald Trump has been the worst president for our environment in history. And this is why I say a, you know, the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden is the difference between a nuclear radiation fallout, peel the skin off your face burn, is a vote for Donald Trump, and a uh, vote for Joe Biden is just like, I don't know, a third degree sunburn uh, on this planet. But it makes no difference. Republican or Democrat, Donald Trump is going to bring down the planet uh, a little bit quicker than Joe Biden. But we are doomed. We are doomed. We're doomed. Your little kids are doomed. Uh, this planet is doomed. And with that, uh, yes, if you enjoyed Max Blumenthal's uh, <laughs> expose on the green billionaires, please give Max some love and thumb up this video. And we would love to have you uh, subscribe to this cheerful channel. If there's any, if you have any ray of hope and you need to be disabused uh, of any myth floating around in your head that there is one iota of hope left on this planet, please subscribe to Collapse Chronicles where I will be doing my best to disavow you of that notion. Uh, and I will be back on Friday, maybe tomorrow, but definitely Friday with my Manga Bay Roundup rant. But uh, I have to get back fixing the electric switch on my septic tank pump. I uh, hope I don't die of heat stroke now that uh, Labor Day has come and gone. Bye, guys. You look like an exhausted little dog on a hot summer day.